I'm visiting Seven Hills School today, and I'm teaching the entire seventh grade about Cincinnati's world famous fossils. They have given me uh, four tables to set across, set up with this displays, and uh, my mounted fossils do take up a lot of space and I have a lot of colorful posters. Um, this is a diorama of what Cincinnati looked like when it was under the sea. Cincinnati is uniquely famous in all the world for being the best location to find uh, upper or late Ordovician age fossils. There's some anatomy of some trilobites. There it gets its name, trilobes. There's a poster of geologic time, the geologic time periods, and we live during the Holocene. Go way back in time to the Ordovician. That is the geologic period our fossils are from. And the Ordovician period was almost named the Cincinnati period. Cincinnati and or second choice of its name. A Cincinnati fossil book that is a guide. There are some subtle sea ripples in this uh, sea mud, this lithified mud. I have some very big colorful posters to illustrate what these creatures looked like alive. Explained anatomy. Here's one on uh, coral, for example, the different polyps in modern day coral. And here's some fossilized coral. This is a big head of fossilized coral. Here's fossilized bryzoans, and their entire coral reefs of bryzoa. And snails. These are all internal molds. There are a few shells in this. This is a unique slab of rock. This rock alone has five different species in it. Clusters and clusters of them. There's the poster on snails. With their anatomy explained. This, this table here. I have so many fossils. I need about four, four tables to do this display right. And of course the Posters can be behind one another. It doesn't need to take up quite as much space if space is limited. But uh, it's a large display, large hands-on display. The kids get to see these, touch these. And here's, this one's on crinoids. And here's one you can see all the little tiny stem plates of the crinoids. Here they are. Here's some rare whole ones. And some very rare, entirely whole ones, intact ones with the uh, little calyx. Calyx is intact. And the Riker mounts of the crinoids. It's a common way of finding them are shriveled up and small, closed like a mop. This displays of the brachiopods, the seashells, the fossil seashells. 35 different species of brachiopods found in Cincinnati. Some very small. The smallest one is the size of a BB. The largest one is this one here. And this is what they look like lying peacefully on the seafloor. And this is the result of sea storms that have uh, crunched all the seashells into one another. The soft, oozy mud has been uh, squished together by the hurricane forces of the storms, sea storms. And uh, now all the shells are seen on edge. They're sort of like Pringles potato chips coming out of a can, one stacked in behind another. So they're just stacked and packed. And the same thing happens in today's seas and oceans after a sea storm. The oozy mud, just a tremendous force which plows all the uh, shells together. But here they are, usually they're just in a restful state, fossilized. And these are all clams. These are brachiopods. Brachiopods are symmetrical, the clam shells are not. And here's a poster on the brachiopods. And more mounted fossils of them. Smallest one in Cincinnati, the Zygospira, size of a BB. Some of the larger ones. You can see any of my uh, Cincinnati fossils, you can see it on YouTube. So just enter in Cincinnati fossils or dry dredgers. And there's uh, well over two dozen different uh, videotapes to watch on these. Here's the cephalopods, the nautiloid cephalopods. Here's the internal mold. Here's uh, some fragments. And came okay, from a creature like this. This was the top predator, largest animal on Earth in the seas at this time, was this shelled squid-like creature, nautiloid cephalopod. Most likely the most intelligent animal on Earth, too, at the time. Here's a living relative, the uh, pearly nautilus. Here's a cutaway showing the anatomy, the back chambers, 
that we see fossilized. Here's the living chamber. There's the common fragments. The kids, the school kids, they get to see these hands-on. They get to pass these around. This way they can touch and feel them and uh, get a sense of their weight, the feel of the minerals. And uh, it's a little different experience than just looking at them in a book. It really uh, brings it to life to have them right in front of you. Here's some of my trilobite posters explaining the anatomy. The three lobes that make a trilobite and what they looked like when they were alive, grazing on the seafloor. This is a really neat one. The kids can take a magnifying glass. This little speck of rock, no bigger than a postage stamp, has uh, 13 babies. 13 baby trilobites on that rock. Pretty amazing. Also some fossilized worm teeth. Believe it or not, little tiny worms. They have little tiny teeth. And you can see the grasping hooks. If any of the schools would like to invite me to come out and give this presentation to the kids, uh, the school children in science, usually the seventh grade does, uh, spends time on Cincinnati geology and fossils in particular. So the, uh, you need a, a few tables to accommodate this display, so you need a, a one room. The Seven Hill School has had me out every year. I've taught uh, the entire seventh grade class Year after year, this is now my third year here. And we live in what's called the Holocene here. If you, and if the earlier geologic periods, the Pleistocene, Pliocene, Miocene, Oligocene, Eocene, Paleocene, Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic, we're still going farther back in time, the Permian, Carboniferous, Devonian, Silurian, we get to the Ordovician. And this Ordovician period is a span of some 60 million years when Cincinnati and the tri-state area was under the sea, anywhere from 5 to 60 feet of sea water. And not only were we under the sea, but we were underneath the equator as well. And we were under the sea, under the equator, and these, this shallow tropical inland sea that was under the equator was home to these wonderful uh, early invertebrate marine life forms. All the seashells, crying with cephalopods, uh, coral reefs, rhizoan reefs, and that's what I have here to show you today is all these wonderful specimens. The biggest seashell of all is called a raffinesquina, and it's not a Latin name, it's a French name. It's named after a Frenchman, raffinesque. And these ones are laid out flat and peacefully. These ones here, they're all pushed on their sides from a hurricane force storm. We know that We've seen it happen in today's oceans and seas. When a sea storm comes along, it'll leave remains like this. That is, they all get compact, compacted and compressed by the sea storm pushing all the sediments, and the seashells get crumpled up just like the like a Pringles potato chip coming out of a can. They're all side by side and pushed edge to edge and they're on their side. But you see that this species and this species are one and the same. It's just under different circumstances. So this is called a tempest sign. That is, the sea storm has pushed them over on their side. All the other ones, these are all clusters of different species of seashell, and they're all laid out peacefully.